Okay, going on with uh, comparative literature of the uh, of the uh, 19th century of the Victorian era, uh, there is a, a thunderstorm coming. I'm hoping I can get this done before the lightning strikes. Uh, all right, uh, turning now to books that were written, first of all, in, uh, in German. I'd like to start with the Grimm brothers. Well, they didn't actually do original writing. They were collectors of folk tales. Uh, they went around uh, in a scientific way, collecting folk tales, uh, and uh, they didn't want to change anything. Uh, you know that would have damaged it. And 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 I like to point out that this you can see romanticism here. The idea that simple folk would uh, would uh, who would care about the the stories that peasants were telling each other, but they did. Uh, here's a collection uh, in uh, in English. Uh, here's a collection in German that my very good friend, who's helped me all year with this course, sent me this. This is in German, in the original. Uh, that's the way I want to ultimately read them. Such stories as, and I didn't write them down, actually, because I thought, hey, give it a try. Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, uh, uh, The Frog Prince, Rumpelstiltskin, Sleeping Beauty. Sometimes I take that time to to tell about Beeping Saluti, um, which is a, I, I can't remember if I, oh, I did, I think I taught you that earlier in the year, about uh, those, the, I've heard these used as uh, an excuse to use spoonerisms. Um, wonderful, I mean, they, they swept the world. What, uh, look at the money Disney Studios made off them, but, you know, uh, all over the world, what would your childhood have been like if you didn't know about Little Red Riding Hood? Uh, I say compared to Cecil Sharp. Well, that's back in England, and this, he isn't nearly so well known. But Cecil Sharp in England did a, a similar thing, collecting folk songs, English folk songs. And then he put them, uh, he, he wrote piano, piano uh, uh, harmonizations to them. Uh, and again, there's so much show and tell here. Folk songs of Britain and Ireland. <laughs> Look at this monster. Look at this monster, song after song after song. This, this is the literature of the folk. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, as I said, a romantic idea. Uh, Karl Marx, uh, German, wrote in German. Uh, ultimately, he died, I think, in England. But I call him the father of communism. There were others. There was Engels. There were other writers. But he wrote the Communist Manifesto, Workers of the World Unite. Uh, and uh, a lot of what I'm telling you here is to get you ready to try to understand what happened in the 20th century. His writing, uh, the writing of some of these men in the uh, 19th century, becomes so influential in, in the 20th century. Uh, nowadays, a lot of students don't even know what my students don't even know what communism is, and I have to try to explain it to them, or they can't come up with the word. Uh, which is, says something about the end of the 20th century. Friedrich Nietzsche, what a combination of letters there. He wrote uh, no fiction. He was a philosopher. At the end of his life, he went crazy. Uh, oh, and I, at some point I wanted to tell you, too, that in, in these cases, some of these guys, I read them in translation when I was in college. But, and I knew I, I, was gonna, I was not going to be a history teacher. I was not going to go into politics. Uh, I was an English major, but their writing was so energetic. Freud and, 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 and Nietzsche, even in translation, uh, Darwin, well, that wasn't translation, but these were great writers, and, and I respond to them really in terms of their writing as much as their ideas. Um, thus speak Zarathustra. I don't know, um, in German it would be also sprach Zarathustra, I guess. Uh, Anyway, uh, I, I don't think people read these much anymore, at least not in English, but what an effect this man had. Uh, he, he came up with the idea of the Uber, Übermensch, uh, the, uh, it, sometimes that's translated as a superman, but that's a comic strip, or the overman, uh, this heroic idea of... Um, uh, of, well, it, it's connected to Aryanism. I mean, it, it's so often it's the Aryan race, and they were uh, the supermen. Uh, and if I begin to sound a little bit like Hitler, well, yes, uh, Hitler threw a guy, Wagner, here it is, Richard Wagner, Richard Wagner, 
uh, wrote operas, and he was very influenced by by this kind of thinking, and uh, also by Romanticism. There's a castle in Bavaria built by King Ludwig II, uh, who was profoundly influenced by Romanticism and, and Wagner's operas. Uh, Va- uh, this is a comic book version of the Ring Cycle, four operas. Uh, that's where you you find uh, uh, Brunhilde and uh, and Siegfried. Um, don't have time to go into it, but I want to mention his name. Some people just love his music. Uh, I don't love it yet as much as, as maybe I will someday. Uh, but anyway, Hitler loved Wagner's music. And now Hitler, we get to him, that's in the 20th century. And that's going to be a tricky business to talk about him. But I say start by, by knowing about Nietzsche and knowing about Karl Marx. You need to lead up to it to, to see where this kind of thinking might have come from. And also Freud, Sigmund Freud. He was Austrian, but he wrote in German, sometimes called the father of psychoanalysis. He was a, uh, a scientist. Uh, one of the things people don't, they forget about Freud, is that he was working with the insane. He did not work with healthy minds. He was studying the insane but people just love to pick up his ideas and try to apply it more widely. Some people still accept, some people think, no, I didn't have it right. Uh, He believed that you could interpret dreams. One of his books was called The Interpretation of Dreams. In case I don't mention it, the the one of his books that impressed me the most was Civilization and Its Discontents. His writing as much as anything. uh, most people agree uh, that, that the subconscious is there, or sometimes it's called the unconscious, part of your mind that you're not really aware of, but it's very active. It, uh, you know, I like to say he discovered the subconscious. Uh, also, I think, uh, and he named the ego and the id. Now, an ego is what you think of yourself. If you have a strong ego, you think that you're okay, basically. You're okay. If you have a weak ego, you spend the rest of your life trying to convince yourself that maybe you are okay. And a couple ways of doing that. One way is to find somebody who's lesser than you. And, it, you know, I, I like to sometimes tell kids, if you, ever, if you ever wonder why would some big, strong, popular kid pick on some little kid, bully him, why would he do that? The kid can't fight back. Uh, well, I say one explanation is he has a weak ego by showing how lowly somebody else is, well then you must be okay. Uh, You know, that's the work of a a weak ego. Another thing, if if a person has a weak ego, they can't be teased uh, very well. It hurts too much. Uh, A lot of this says Freud, but I need you to have that idea for when I talk about the 20th century. Freudian slips, well, I'll come to them in a second. He said that sex was at least one, if not the most powerful, human drive. Now, remember, this is coming out of the Victorian world. Uh, And again, I I think people don't agree with that. A lot of people don't agree with that now, scientists. But it was popularized by the 1920s. Uh, And then uh, Freudian slips. Well, Freudian slips, I should put that in quotes, are slips of the tongue. When, when you say something and you don't know, why did you say that? Where did that come from? Uh, and uh, uh, Freud had an answer. That was your subconscious appearing. It, that it, it appeared in dreams. Since you couldn't really control your dreams, your subconscious would appear. It would give you a glimpse into the subconscious. I believe hip, hypnotism as well did that. But anyway, back to Freudian slips. If you say something and it's not what you meant at all and you don't know why you said it, that's become popularized as a way of pouncing on it. Aha, we know what you're thinking down deep. Uh, uh, every time I've taught this, I've always remembered, I was writing on the board one time, teaching about Grimm Brothers, and I was going to write down Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> but I wrote down Hansel and Gretchen, and, 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 and kids, ran, I think I'd already taught about Freud, and kids said, who's Gretchen? And I thought, oh, oh my gosh, uh, I was embarrassed. I, you know, are you thinking about somebody named Gretchen? I was so glad that I had no students at that time named Gretchen. That would have been very awkward. But anyway, um, 
Freudian slips. Oh, sometimes used, often used comically in the movie uh, uh, Christmas Vacation. Chevy Chase goes in to buy some, a present for his wife and a, a jewelry. And the girl behind the counter is really remarkable in, in a way. And uh, it's cold, cold out, and he, he's, he's looking at this woman, and he says, Whoa, it's really ni uh, nipply out. I mean nippy. Uh, and uh, he goes to the and says, I seem to only have nipples and dimes. I mean nickels and dimes. Uh, and, and there's a string of them. It was also done in, uh, kids know about other ones. There was one called Fierce Creatures, I think, uh, about a zoo, where there's a whole scene full of Freudian slips. Uh, anyway, there's fun ha head with them. Uh, Tolstoy, um, a novelist, uh, uh, enormously famous in his lifetime. War and Peace is his masterpiece. I've actually read the thing. It's giant. It's about Russia during the uh, uh, Napoleonic Wars. Uh, I had nothing better to do. I was swinging in a hammock in Brazil for two months or a month. That's a it probably took me two months to read it because I am a slow reader, but it was great. I really liked it. It kind of, you read a book like that, it, it changed the way I think about Russia. Anna Karenina, I don't know if I've spelled it right. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it's the, another one of his that's really famous. This one I have not read. Uh, but very, very popular. I recommend it highly. Switzerland taken as a, an author. You usually, people usually can't come up with the names of, of the authors. But in Switzerland, they speak four languages. It's the German Swiss that uh, one of them came up with, Swiss Family Robinson. That was my father's favorite book, he said. It's in that, it's in that same uh, genre as Robinson Crusoe, Mysterious Island. And then Heidi. Heidi. Um, so popular. I think Swiss girls in general don't like it much if you refer to them as Heidi because it's just too, it's become too popular. But uh, anyway, all of these love. And now, uh, this is Friday. I'll talk to you Monday, but I've got a surprise uh, sort of coming for you. There's, a, there's 11 days left, I think. I've got the 20th century to deal with and German. I'm going to give you a taste of German. Uh, but there's another surprise coming as well uh, on Monday. Okay, we'll see you then.